And I want to welcome and thank you all for being here this morning. Now, you know, there's an old saying that you want to make hay while the sun shines. Now, you want to, uh, you want to do, you want to accomplish your goals, you want to get things done when the times and the conditions are right. Now, there probably hasn't been an actual haymaker on this spot in about 100 years. And uh, the sun is certainly not uh, shining today. Um, but we are here because the times and the conditions are right uh, to get our legislature uh, to do something, to make something right. We're here to shed a national light on the cities that still put our children and everyone's health and security and safety at risk by allowing seductive alcohol ads on their transit systems and public spaces. And we are here today to join together to ask our city, city leaders to put an end to it. Alcohol Justice is releasing this report today called These Bus Ads Don't Stop for Children, Alcohol Advertising on Public Transit. Some of America's biggest cities like Chicago, Atlanta, Dallas, New York, still allow alcohol ads in the face of children going to school. Now, why are we releasing this report in Los Angeles? We have here in LA, one of the national metropolitan areas that does not allow alcohol ads in its transit system, except for the bus shelters. And we look forward to our city leaders taking the next step and banning alcohol ads on bus shelters. Yeah. Los Angeles, thank you. Los Angeles could set a shining example for the other cities to follow. We have the leadership of a vibrant coalition that's here today, and we have the leadership of Councilman Paul Koretz, who will speak to us in a few moments. But we must place the well-being of our youth and families over alcohol ad revenue. And we are so very close. Big alcohol corporations and advertising firms would like to get our children drinking early and often. And alcohol ads, you know, if I can, there's a character that, uh, that I played for a long time, and if I, might, if I might for a moment suggest what he might say, alcohol ads can make your child into a dumbass. Alcohol ads do not belong in public buses, trains, benches, or bus shelters. Now, we have a number of really good people standing here with me today, haymakers, if you will, who will speak more about the report and the opportunity to make some really good hay. So first of all, I would like to introduce my good friend, Bruce Lee Livingston, the executive director and CEO of Alcohol Justice the National Alcohol Industry Watchdog based in Marin County. For the past 26 years, Bruce's organization has been fighting for stronger alcohol policy controls at all levels of government to reduce <laughs> alcohol-related harm. I know Bruce is a street fighter who doesn't mind mixing it up in the face of big alcohol either. Bruce is going to tell us about the new report. Bruce. Thank you, Kerwood. Thank you, Kerwood. We are delighted to be emceed today by Kurtwood Smith. You know him, of course, from many television and movie roles, especially as the cop killer on RoboCop <laughs> and uh, Red Foreman on that 70s show. He's taking time off today from filming a new ABC television series called Resurrection, which will be premiering next year. Can the supporters here today give a big hand for Kurtwood Smith? Yeah. Alcohol Justice is a national alcohol industry watchdog that helps organize the NoAlcoholAds.org coalition in Los Angeles and supports the successful efforts of the coalition in Boston called Safe MA. Today, we are releasing a major national survey and report about alcohol advertising on public transportation systems in the United States. It's called These Bus Ads Don't Stop for Children alcohol advertising on public transit. Earlier this year, we surveyed advertising policies and contracts for advertising in the 32 largest markets 
for public transportation ridership in the United States. Here's the results. First, the good news. 18 out of 32 transit agencies and cities have policies in place that ban alcohol advertising on all public transit and related street furniture. This includes every agency in California, every agency in California except the city of Los Angeles. It is actually the norm in the United States that buses and trains are not allowed to show alcohol ads to children. Model policies and laws banning alcohol ads exist in Seattle, San Francisco, Philadelphia, and I think Honolulu is, and, um, and uh, Maryland are very good as well. The partial good news is that of the 14 remaining transit agencies, eight of them are, have partial bans on alcohol advertising. This now includes the city of Los Angeles, where the NoAlcoholAds.org coalition, you wonderful leaders that are here today, succeeded several years ago in 2010 in um, banning alcohol ads from the new contract for 6,000 bus benches. Congratulations to you leaders in Los Angeles. Now here's the bad news from our report. It looks like some of the biggest transit agencies and cities in the country still allow alcohol advertising in some form on buses, trains, uh, bus shelters, benches, and other street furniture like kiosks. The list of areas that allow alcohol ads includes New York City, Chicago, Atlanta, Los Angeles, and Dallas. Recently, Dallas and Chicago went the wrong direction. They loosened their policies and now they allow even more advertising that will entice our children to drink. The Alcohol Justice Report has new data on alcohol advertising revenue from four agencies, data we've never seen before, that makes it absolutely clear that alcohol advertising is actually a trivial source of income for these agencies. The report finds that the economic justifications at the transit agencies do not stand up to scrutiny as only 3 to 10 percent of total ad revenue is from alcohol ads. Only 0.03 to 0.1 percent of operating revenue is from alcohol ads. Let me repeat, alcohol ad revenue is less than 10 percent of total advertising and it is less than one-tenth of one percent of total operating revenue from these agencies. To save less than a penny from each rider's fare, the transit agencies are exposing millions of underage youth, especially children of color, to alcohol ads daily and contributing to emergency room and addiction costs for youth. The report concludes that the strongest approach to achieving the goal of banning alcohol ads lies with changing government policy through new ordinances and laws. Transportation agency boards and city councils need to put youth before big alcohol profits. We call on governments throughout the country to create public policies and laws to end alcohol ads on public transit now. All right, and I have a quick announcement to make about the legislation here at City Hall in, um, in Los Angeles. Uh, it actually will be moving from the committee it was in to the budget committee and then to the full uh, board to, to authorize it to be made into uh, 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 law for, um, to be made into the language for uh, passing the law. So the next step is going to the budget committee and uh, keep that in mind in, uh, in upcoming speakers um, uh, about this. So let's end alcohol ads on public transit now starting in Los Angeles, folks. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Bruce. On July 1st, 2013, Paul Koretz took the oath of office to begin his second term as Los Angeles Council member representing the city's historic 5th District. Paul hopes that his council service in the city of Los Angeles will help usher in a new era of heightened commitment by the city to listen to the voice of the people and to be ever engaged in the life of our local neighborhoods. He's always eager to hear from and work side by side with Los Angeles constituents, organizations, and community leaders. It is the perspective of Councilmember Paul Koretz 
that this city is to be governed not just by the anointed few, but by all who call it home. Council member. Thank you. Well, good morning, everyone. I'm delighted to be here today and to be joining Alcohol Justice and so many great friends, activists, and leaders who want the very best for our young people. All of us are deeply concerned about the human costs associated with the vast and too often tragically irresponsible consumption of alcohol in our society. These social problems are aggravated enormously by the prevalence of underage drinking. Too often we read or see shocking news reports describing how things went terribly wrong at parties where binge drinking occurred. But even when there are no sensational headlines of lives cut short or tragically impacted due to binge drinking or drunk driving, there may still be severe long-term physical and mental health issues accruing for any person who drinks steadily and heavily over the course of a lifetime. And those are costs we certainly don't want to ignore. And we're not just talking about the tragic loss of health, health and life for underage drinkers. Dr. Ernest Noble, director of the UCLA Alcohol Research Center, has stated that underage drinking costs the citizens of California $6.8 billion dollars a year. Young people may take those first drinks for a number of reasons, including peer pressure, but also including being exposed to advertising hyping the supposed allure of liquor. That's why it's so important that we not be part of the problem, and so I'm very pleased to be supporting the proposed city ordinance that will ban alcohol ads on city-owned and controlled property including the bus shelters used daily by youth in our city. I believe that banning these ads will help limit underage consumption of alcohol and the problems associated with alcohol use. And I also want to praise former council member Richard Alarcon for initiating this motion and all the other council members, uh, Jose Huizar, Bill Rosendahl, Tony Cardenas, who joined me in seconding the motion. I also want to thank the Chief Legislative Analyst Office for the insightful report they've provided, which will help the deliberations in the Budget and Finance and Public Safety Committees, where the matter is now pending. Um, and, I, and I'm a member of the Budget and Finance Committee, so I look forward to uh, helping shepherd that through the committee. The cities of Philadelphia and San Francisco have already adopted similar ordinances because they too know the enormous consequences of underage drinking. Here in Los Angeles, we can do the same, using those cities as a model. The motion supported here today is a great step forward, and so I call on my fellow council members to support this key motion and to ban the advertising of alcohol on city-owned and controlled property. It's about time. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Paul. Now I want to introduce to you Professor Jerry Grenard. He received his doctorate in health behavior research from the Keck School of Medicine at the University of Southern California. And his career in academia has focused on research and health behaviors that are associated with chronic diseases such as uh, substance abuse, HIV risk behavior, obesity, and diabetes. He has published over 30 research articles with his colleagues in medical journals such as pediatrics, where they published findings on the influence of alcohol advertising on underage drinking. Dr. Alan Stacy and Dr. Jerry Grenard at CGU recently received funding from the NIH and FDA for a five-year study on the influence of tobacco advertising on smoking among youth. Please welcome Professor Jerry Grenard. Thank you, Kirkwood. Now, I understand that Councilman Paul Koretz graduated from UCLA. Go Bruins. But I won't hold that against him, even though I graduated from USC. We may be cross-city rivals on the field, but I definitely applaud and support his efforts to reduce underage drinking here in LA. It is my great privilege to speak today in recognition of the report released by, the alcohol, by alcohol Justice on banning alcohol ads on public transit and in support of the proposed ordinance for the city of LA. 
I helped conduct a research study on alcohol advertising with Dr. Alan Stacy when we were at the University of Southern California. We surveyed nearly 4,000 middle school students in the seventh grade from across LA County and followed them for three more years, conducting surveys from those same students in the eighth, ninth, and tenth grades. The results showed that more exposure to televised alcohol advertisements in the seventh grade were associated with more drinking of alcohol in the eighth and ninth grades, and then more problems related to alcohol in the tenth grade. Problems included failing to do homework, going to school drunk, and getting into fights. Many students over the past, many studies over the past 20 to 30 years have found an association between advertising and underage drinking. But this was the first longitudinal study to show that this association increases the risk of having problems related to drinking in high school. To me, the evidence is clear that alcohol ads are harmful to kids in LA. We need to remove alcohol ads from public property and give all our youth a chance to be healthy and to get a good education. With this great coalition and with the support of Council Member Coretz, we will make it happen. Thank you for your support. And back to you, Kirkwood. So, um, UCLA and SC, huh? <laughs> well, I'm a Stanford alumni. So I think we took care of both of you guys. <clears throat> Uh, right now, I'd like to bring up uh, Ms. Uh, Sarah Blanche. Sarah is currently applying 20 years of corporate marketing experience to the public sector. Ms. Blanche now manages projects with the Institute for Public Strategies in Santa Monica and Venice to reduce the rates of underage and bi binge drinking, where she engages the media, conducts community outreach, and builds awareness with key community stakeholders. Ms. Sarah Blanche. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I am also a Stanford alum, but that's neither here nor there. It's another matter. Once again, my name is Sarah Blanche, and I am with the Institute for Public Strategies. Our organization has over 20 years of experience working with communities around the country to reduce alcohol problems. So we have unique insight into the issues we're discussing today. Every year, whether it's intentional or not, the alcohol industry barrages kids with hundreds of thousands of advertisements in magazines, on television, on billboards, sponsorships with product placements, it's endless, and now more than ever online. The research shows it's having its impact Young people who respond to these ads believe that drinking leads to positive consequences, that their peers drink frequently, that their peers approve of drinking, all of which combine to create a much greater likelihood that they themselves will drink alcohol. Now, the issue at stake today is, should we allow the alcohol industry to advertise on city-owned and controlled property? Obviously, the answer is no. The alcohol industry is incredibly powerful and wealthy. It's in the business of making money. We should be in the business of protecting our young people. If we allow alcohol ads on public property, we are playing our part in exposing our kids to the alcohol industry's message. We are quite simply looking the other way. Alcohol is the drug of choice for teens. It's the truth. It is responsible for more than 4,700 underage deaths annually, according to the CDC. It is a very real problem, and it remains one of our nation's biggest public health and safety concerns. So today, I'm happy to join with all of us here to encourage us to take this opportunity to lead. 
to limit the scope of big alcohol's reach. It's within our power and it's our responsibility. So we all today urge the city council to support the motion to prohibit alcohol ads on city owned and controlled property. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you so much. Thank you, Sarah. Next, we have Ruben Rodriguez, and Ruben is the chair of the coalition to ban alcohol ads on public property in Los Angeles. And he is also the executive director of Pueblo y Salud, Inc., Community and Health, a social and human service agency in the, in the Northeast San Fernando Valley. Mr. Rodriguez has been involved in the areas of alcohol, drugs, and tobacco abuse treatment and prevention for the last 18 years. And it's my pleasure to welcome Ruben Rodriguez. Thank you, Kirk. Thank you, everyone that's uh, joined us today. Um, the LA Coalition to Ban Alcohol Ads on uh, City Property or Public Property is comprised of uh, over 40 organizations and individuals throughout the LA County and some out-of-state support. And uh, we're here. Um, I'm, I'm going to say the next few words in Spanish for the benefit of uh, you know more than uh, half the population of LA that speaks in Spanish. Eh, quiero empezar, uh, soy Rubén Rodríguez, encabezando la coalición para la prevención de anuncios de alcohol en la propiedad, en las propiedades de la ciudad de Los Ángeles, y también soy miembro, uh, de, eh, director ejecutivo de Pueblo y Salud, una organización en el Valle de San Fernando y en Palmdale. Y estamos aquí primeramente para darle gracias al concejal Paul Coretz, que nos va a seguir ayudando, ya en la ausencia de un concejal que salió, uh, el señor Richard Alarcón, a tratar de pasar una ley, una ordenanza que va a prohibir los anuncios en las propiedades que son de la ciudad de Los Ángeles. En especial, las que están en, junto a las bancas de los autobuses, donde un, un gran porcentaje de nuestra juventud se sube a los camiones yendo a la escuela uh, o personas yendo al trabajo y los exponen a los anuncios. Estamos tratando de prohibir estos anuncios porque la juventud que está haciendo consumo del alcohol a unos niveles muy peligrosos, que los lleva a otras cosas, que los lleva a alcohol. La influencia no es nada más por medio de los amigos o como muchos de, de nosotros como padres decimos, a uh, las malas amistades. Estén conscientes de que la industria de alcohol nos está bombardeando constantemente, bombardeando como una, una bomba dañosa, este, haciendo, animando a, a nuestros hijos y hijas a que consuman alcohol. Por eso estamos pidiendo a la ciudad, a los, a los líderes de esta ciudad, a los concejales, que por favor pasen esta ordenanza prohibiendo todo anuncio de alcohol en toda propiedad que sea de la ciudad o controlada por, por la ciudad. Muchísimas gracias. Thank you, Ruben. Richard Saldivar is the founder and executive director of the Wall Las Memorias Project, a nonprofit organization dedicated to promoting wellness and preventing illness among Latino populations affected by HIV AIDS. Combining HIV AIDS education and prevention, sensitivity to the spiritual needs and religious belief of its clients, the Wall Las Memorias under Saldivar's leadership, has been in the forefront of the fight against HIV AIDS in Los Angeles. Richard. Thank you so much. You know, I, it's, uh, it's becoming a, a common practice to gather to, to fight uh, legislation or promote legislation in regards to this issue. We've all become very, uh, it's been a normal practice on the east side of Los Angeles, whether it's in Boyle Heights or whether it's in southeast Los Angeles or in El Sereno, uh, to have the common folks, the, the constituents coming up, the young people complaining that there is over licensing of, of establishments uh, by ABC and that there's just too much advertisement when it comes to liquor. 
Recently, our program uh, concluded a, a, a brief 18-month uh, 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 tenure with young gay men in Boyle Heights, where they identified alcoholism and over signage and overselling as a huge problem to their particular community. We in, in Southeast Los Angeles and other programs are also working with young people. We have the data, whether it's the data that was shared with you here before today, the data from John Hopkins, the data from the County uh, Department of Public Health that says that advertisement contributes to drinking, binge drinking among young people. We know that. It's common knowledge. I believe that government was established to the, in the very beginning to look, for the, to look out for the public safety and the welfare of its citizenry. If that is so, then this is a public safety issue that government should be government and not public corporation, not public pri uh, property. So when government makes these decisions, they should look for all the general welfare and the public safety of all its citizens. We in the community on the east side of Los Angeles support this, uh, this uh, ordinance. We support this, this, uh, this uh, march to social justice for young people and for the consumer and for people of all color. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Janice Boafo is a program coordinator at Tarzana Treatment Centers focusing on alcohol, tobacco, and other drug prevention throughout the San Fernando Valley. Janice is also the director of planning and program development for Saving Lives Drug and Alcohol Coalition. For over 15 years, she has provided servant leadership and given a voice to her local community. Janice Boafo. Good morning, thank you. It gives me great pleasure and pride and honor to come and speak to you on behalf of the people that are most affected by alcohol ads. Youth and uh, the working poor, people who use public transportation in Los Angeles. It, it is essential to me to communicate what they're unable to communicate because they're working, they're at school, um, they're fighting the good fight. As a as a prevention specialist and a prevention um, professional and a treatment professional, I'm in a unique position to see the impact of alcohol ads on youth. It's not, uh, un, un, it's not, it's typical or it's not atypical for us to come in contact with a 25-year-old client who's coming to seek services from us to treat alcoholism, who's been regularly drinking since the age of 12 or 13. In fact, by the age of 15, upwards of 70% of the students and clients that we serve have been drinking regularly. But if we focus specifically on the individual attributes, I think we're missing a larger point. We're missing an opportunity to address the structural issues, the environmental issues that influence alcohol use. Uh, we're missing an opportunity to talk about the context in which underage drinking takes place. And keeping in mind that underage drinking is involved in the top three causes of death for youth, homicide, suicide, and accidents. It's, it's not child's play. But information alone is ineffective to prevent underage drinking. It must be combined with skills, services, policy, and particularly enforcement. In the city of Los Angeles, that's what we're asking for. We're asking for policy. We're asking for protection for the most vulnerable among us. We're asking for you to save lives. We're asking for the city of Los Angeles to no longer contribute to pro-alcohol social norms. Alcohol ads are far from innocuous media. Youth who we've been interviewing and working with for years tell us that alcohol ads influence them. They see that when you drink, you have a good time. There are no negative consequences, and it's normal. And the way that they learn about alcohol use is by making bad mistakes. Youth often talk to us about drinking to blackout. They talk to us about being unable to drink in moderation and the influence that social media, alcohol ads, and those influences have on their lives. Keeping in mind that the people that we're talking about being influenced are those who are already most at risk, low socioeconomic status youth, youth of color, and the working poor. What we're asking for today is consistent messaging from the city of Los Angeles. Messaging that says that we care about you, that we protect you, that we will give voice to your issues. And that we will create opportunities for you instead of working against you and betting against you. 
Hello, I'm here on behalf of Councilman Jose Wiesar. Uh, as a father of four young children um, growing up in Boyle Heights, the council member is a strong uh, supporter of this particular legislation. Um, alcoholism with our young people is a huge problem, not just in Boyle Heights, not just in Eagle Rock, El Sereno, or downtown, but across the country. Uh, the council member recognizes this, and he also understands that this is a very actionable and simple solution uh, or a method of addressing this type um, of problem. So he couldn't be here today, but he has uh, his full support behind this type of legislation. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, and um, please um, uh, thank the, uh, uh, the council member for us. Uh, Julie Landgrave is an associate director of Women Against Gun Violence. She was born in the United States, but raised in Mexico. Julie received her BA degree in 2005. Women Against Gun Violence was founded in 1993 to address one of the most crucial public health issues in our time, gun violence. Julie Langray. Good morning, and thank you for the opportunity to address you today regarding a ban of alcohol and advertisement on city-owned and controlled property. It is undeniable that alcohol and gun violence are linked. Studies have shown that alcohol abuse and dependence has a casual relationship with violence, including assault and the use of weapons. Significant associations have been found between substance use disorders and making threats against others with a firearm. Heavy drinking in the study were found almost to be three times as likely to be shot in an assault compared to non-drinkers. The same study found that simply being in an area of high density takeout establishments such as liquor and convenience stores double a person's risk of being shot. And heavy drinkers in the same area were nine and a half times more likely to be shot in an assault. It has also been reported that 25% of the gunshots uh, victims have tested positive for alcohol. There's an opportunity for a city to continue its fight against gun violence in a new epidemic front by banning advertisement of alcohol in our um, transportation. Um, we, Women Against Gun Violence, and our coalition partners are counting on the LA City to continue its, its good work. Thank you. Thank you, Julie. Our next speaker is Dennis Hathaway. Dennis is the president of the Coalition to Ban Billboard Blight, which I think has to be one of the best names of an organization going. <laughs> The Coalition to Ban Billboard Blight, a nonprofit organization representing individuals and community groups throughout Los Angeles concerned with limiting billboards and outdoor advertising in our city's public spaces. Dennis Hathaway. Thank you. I'm glad you like our name. Um, I'm very happy to be here as part of a coalition. Uh, working on this issue, this very important issue of community health. Uh, I want to thank Alcohol Justice. Alcohol Justice is the glue that holds this coalition together. Without them, without their tireless work, we wouldn't be where we are today. I also want to thank Councilman Koretz, who not only for his support of this issue, but for his great support over the past in our efforts to protect the city's visual environment and its public spaces from being overrun with digital billboards and other forms of outdoor advertising. Yesterday I was out driving and I snapped this picture of a bus shelter on Bundy Drive. This is in Councilman uh, Rosendahl, or Councilman Bonin's district. Um, this, has, this bus shelter has two ad panels on it. One has an ad for Malibu Black uh, coconut flavored rum. And the text on the ad is, crank it up. Uh, the other side of the ad has an ad for Bushmills whiskey. It has four young men, all 
grinning and laughing and having a good time. Uh, obviously aimed for a youthful demographic, which makes sense because, as we've heard here, youth are the heavy users of transit, and youth are the are the most vulnerable to this kind of advertising. Now, alcohol is a legal product. It is legal to advertise alcohol. There is no legal requirement, none, that the city provide its public spaces for the um, advertising of alcohol, for the promotion of alcohol, or any other product. Um, this is this is this is public space. This means we own it. It's owned by the public. And if the city doesn't have a legal responsibility for what is promoted on these spaces, it certainly has a moral responsibility not to advertise and promote and help promote products that cause harm to our communities, that result in harm to individuals and families throughout the city, as well as untold expense to us as taxpayers. So we're calling on the city attorney to get this ordinance out to the city council for the city council to pass this and get this on the books as soon as possible. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Dennis. <laughs> Our next speaker, Kevin Michael Key, lives, works, got clean and sober in Skid Row, Los Angeles. For a decade, he's worked as a Skid Row advocate, doing alcohol and other drug prevention for the coalition. And today, he's brought another coalition member with him, also named Kevin. Kevin Michael. Thank you. Good morning. Everybody else talked about the college they graduated from, so I've got my um, alma mater right across my chest. UCLA, the university at the corner of Lenox Avenue in Harlem. <laughs> um, this is a serious matter. And um, as a person in recovery, I fell victim to uh, a whole lot of things, starting with alcohol. Um, Skid Row saved my life and the lives of many. In fact, it's the world's largest recovery community. I thank God for this coalition and for the coalition that helped me begin the prevention work. Um, I've got two coalition members with me, Sylvia Hernandez and Kevin Sedano, a young person who's grown up in Skid Row. And I'll let him tell the rest of the story. Kevin. Hello, um, <clears throat> as my fellow colleague has said, my name is Kevin Sandano. I am a resident in Skid Row. I have experienced the side effects that these ads have done to youth, because I am a youth. These ad ads corrupt the minds of us youth, trying to inflict us to go get alcohol, get drunk, and get loose. These ads corrupt us since a young age. I've seen it so many times when I go to school. These ads need to stop. If we don't stop then, each and every day more youth get harmed and danger and might die more. This might be a small step, but it is a big step for the future to change. These ads must stop, because I have experienced it in first hand. Many of my fellow peers at college go up talking about going to parties and everything. To tell you the truth, I already lost a friend because of alcohol. And yes, it's sad and everything, but this which is why I'm here. These ads must stop. It's one step, but one step makes a big difference. Thank you. Thank you, Kevin. Well said. Well said. Thanks, guys. Very nice, Kevin. Teresa P. Marquez is president, Boyle Heights Stakeholders Association. Teresa is a fourth generation constituent in the Boyle Heights community and a longtime community advocate. The Boyle Heights Stakeholders Association has a mission to improve the quality of life in the community of Boyle Heights by reducing liquor advertisement, 
and the number of liquor licenses in our community. Please welcome Teresa Marquez. Thank you very much. As you heard, I'm from, I was born and raised in Boyle Heights, a community that has been plagued with high density of not only housing people, but definitely liquor licenses and advertisement. Many times we hear for permits of liquor, is it convenient, is it necessary? Well, I've never been able to understand that here in Los Angeles, especially living in Boyle Heights. It's not convenient and it's not necessary, trust me. More advertisement on billboards is not necessary and is definitely not necessary in public space. Our children are the ones that are reading those. Our children, they begin to read, they begin to uh, enunciate the words Next to their bus stop, they start reading liquor and any other kind of uh, liqueurs. It's not necessary and it's not good education for our children. In our community, we have reduced alcohol licenses from over 300 licenses to now a little bit over 200. And yes, some of it has been I thank LAPD and our Councilman Wiesar and now Councilman Koretz for joining us with Alcohol Justice to reduce this advertisement and the, the City of Los Angeles to be responsible and not to add to the alcoholism that we have in children, the dropout, the car accidents, Hit and run many times is due to alcohol drinking. Our children, our dropout, that is also connected to alcohol. Alcohol drinking during the day and not going to school. Help the parents. The parents have a hard time keeping this away from their children and educating them that this is no good. Please, the city of Los Angeles, allow us to take down some of this advertisement and some of this education that is negative to our communities. And I thank Alcohol Justice for helping me. In the last three, four years, I have worked with Alcohol Justice and they're the ones that gave me the guidelines as to what to do, how to do it, and where to go to help reduce the alcohol. And definitely an education for me. My husband, was a Vietnam veteran, came back from Vietnam, and what welcomed him was alcohol. He died very young of alcoholism. Let's not do that either to our veterans. Thank you. Thank you, Teresa. Our last speaker, John O. Walker, Jr. Walker, John O. Whitaker Jr. Excuse me, Johnny. Johnny Whitaker. I drank a lot of Johnny Walker. Yeah, okay. Uh, that must have been it then. Well, Johnny's probably best known as a child actor uh, for uh, in The Family Affair uh, from uh, 19... See, why do they put the dates in here? You know, that's just... <laughs> that's mean, isn't it? You all remember The Family Affair? And John is very proud of his more than 12 years of sobriety and for the fact that he has chosen the profession of alcohol and drug counseling. John is also president of Paso por Paso, a nonprofit support entity helping the Spanish speaking addict find treatment and recovery in their own language. John is also a strong supporter of the Spanish speaking 12 step groups in the San Fernando Valley where he resides. Please welcome Johnny Whitaker. Good morning. As a person in long-term recovery and celebrating 16 years clean and sober just last week, um, I am very proud to be a part of this very important coalition. And I'd just like to talk to you about four truths. Those four truths are one, 
alcohol advertisers and big alcohol has the right to advertise. However, they do not have the right to unduly influence the youth of this nation. They do not have the right to unduly influence people who are recovering from drugs and alcohol and those who are most vulnerable, as we've heard here today. Truth number two, it takes a village to raise a child. And as villagers and as those who help to raise children, as fathers and mothers, aunts and uncles, teachers and others, it is our duty to make sure that our children are not unduly influenced by anything and especially big alcohol and those alcohol advertisers. And truth number three, we as parents, aunts and uncles and villagers have the responsibility to make sure that we are good parents. We are good influencers and good examples to our children and those who are most vulnerable. In doing such, I'd like to congratulate Council Member Koretz for being our city father and other city fathers and other city mothers who have a responsibility to make sure that we do not get unduly advertisements that push people and especially children to drinking at a young age as has been noted here today. As our city fathers and mothers, it is their responsibility to make sure that our property stays free from all alcohol advertising. It is our property. It is not their property. It is not alcohol's property. It is our property. Let's take that property back. Let's make sure that that is our property and that we do not let big alcohol and big alcohol's money take advantage of us and our children. Truth number four, those who choose not to follow us are against us and we have the right to take them from their positions. And that is what we will do, that is what we shall do, and we will do it in the name of our children and those who have passed because of drugs and alcohol. Thank you very much. That's the way to wrap it up, isn't it? Thank you, Johnny. You know, I want to thank all our speakers, everyone who turned out today to support this effort to make our cities healthier and safer places to raise our families. You know, it seems like a no-brainer, doesn't it? We get rid of the ads for booze and life will get better for all of us. You keep the ads and we help big alcohol turn our kids into dumbasses. <laughs> so let's stay connected through alcoholjustice.org and noalcoholads.org. And please do what you can to follow up and support City Councilman, City Council Member Koretz doing the right thing, getting the ordinance passed to take the ads off bus shelters and other public property. And then one day soon, we can celebrate this accomplishment together. So thanks again, drive safe.